God bless you. We bring you greetings in the most holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We bless the Lord for this time and this opportunity to bring forth the word of God unto you. Praise God. Let's get right into the word of God for today. Revelations chapter 3, starting at verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thou crown. Now, we're looking at, praise God, uh, the message for the day is, let no man take your crown. Amen. Let no man take your crown. Now, what verse was that again? Revelations chapter 3, verse 11. Amen. Let's, let's, let's uh, start where it begins with the Church of Philadelphia. This is who we're talking to in the Revelations. In the same, same chapter. Let's go up a couple of verses. And it's going to start right there. Uh, church of Philadelphia, yes. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, a right, these things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. And I, I know that thou works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because now, now notice God said, I'm going to make them worship. At thy feet. Now, I want you to understand, God is telling these people that your enemies are going to worship. And he's saying worship God. He said worship them. I will make them come and worship at your feet. Now, in looking at that, some will say, well, you know, only God should be worshipped. And this is true. But when God gets finished with your enemies, they'll bow down before you. They'll worship you. But what you're supposed to do with that when they do that, redirect them and tell them to worship God. Now, how does this play out? Look at Joseph. His enemies happened to be his family. When God got finished, his family came and bowed at his feet. They worshiped him. They worshiped him. They bowed at his feet. God caused his enemies to bow at his feet. When Peter came and gave the gospel to Cornelius, Cornelius fell down and bowed at his feet. What made Cornelius do that was the way that, 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 that Peter came into his life. An angel calls Peter by name. He's not sure what's going on at this point. He's not sure who Peter even is. So he falls down to worship, and Peter, this is what you're supposed to do. Peter said, get up. I'm a man like you. In other words, worship God. But the mere fact was God caused Cornelius to fall down at Peter's feet. God caused Joseph's brothers to fall down at his feet and bow. God will make your enemies worship at your feet. But when they do that, direct them to God and tell them, I worship man, but worship God. Thank you, Jesus. But still, God causes these things. Knowing that you as his child will then redirect that person and cause that person to worship God. Though they feel that because you're so blessed and all the things God have worked out in you, they not knowing God may fall down at your feet. But that's the power of God causing that to happen. So he said, I'm going to cause them to worship at your feet. To worship at your feet. Understanding what God is doing here. He's showing the favor that Philadelphia had with him. Then I'm going to cause the ones that's coming against you to worship at your feet. Just like it did for Joseph. So the application here, we can look, hey, this is not the first time God ever did this for somebody. He did it for Joseph. He caused people to bow down. And he even did it for Mordecai also in the book of Esther. People were bowing before Mordecai because it's like bow the knee. And, you know, when Joseph uh, rode through Egypt, 
uh, because of his authority, they would say, bow the knee. Because Joseph is coming through. You got to get on your hands and knees now because Joseph is the ruler of Egypt. God was causing people to bow before him. Praise the name of God. But keep reading, daughter. From that verse, keep reading. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now watch what God is saying here. So we, we're looking at the crown. Let no man take your crown. Let no man take your crown. But God is telling these people, listen, I'm going to deliver you from the hour of temptation. And believe me, it's going to last more than an hour. He's talking about a time of tribulation upon the earth. And because they happen to be God's people, God said, I'm going to deliver you from that. In other words, you're not going to be here. I'm going to take you out of that moment. Because it's going to come a time when God's going to do exactly what was said I, when he walked in the flesh, when he spoke this word, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and said, one shall be taken, and the other, be, and the other will be left. Two will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. What God is doing is taking that one out of the hour of temptation. But the one he left behind will face that hour of temptation. They will face the tribulation that's coming upon the earth. But God's going to take his children out of that. And another place teaches us that God has not appointed us unto wrath, but unto salvation. Because that time, that hour is going to be a time of wrath. That hour of temptation. Where a, 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 uh, a, a, a world leader, rather, will rise up. When I say world leader, he's going to reign over all of the earth. It's going to be a one world government. And those that bow before this man is going to taste of the wrath of God. But it will be the hour of temptation when the Antichrist reigns upon the earth. And men and women will tick the mark of the beast upon them. But everyone that ticked this mark shall taste of the wrath of God. Though this man will present you prosperity and make you think that you may buy and sell if you tick this mark, but you can also taste the wrath of God to the utmost. But those that belong to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be delivered from the hour of temptation when that hour will come. Though the Bible used the word hour, it's really a period of time that's coming upon the earth. And we call it the hour of temptation where men would denounce Christ and take on the mark of the beast so they would be forever lost and forever face eternal judgment for this. But the people of God will be delivered from that time. Praise God. From the hour of temptation. Keep reading, daughter. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Yes. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man can take thou crown. Now, basically, let no man take your crown is actually... Letting us know the crown that God gives you is your place with him. Every believer, everyone that's given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ has been given a crown. But the devil is forever trying to move you out of position. And this is where the Bible is saying, don't let the devil move you out of position. Let no man take your crown. When the devil comes, he's coming through shoe leather. It's going to come through a person. It's going to come through an individual. And he wants to move you out of the position God has given you. A crown is God positioning you. It's God placing you. And it's also a representation of all God has given you. We call it a crown. Let no man take your crown. Praise God. Let no man. Take your crown. Hallelujah. Let no man.
take what God has given you. Let no man, praise God, redirect the direction God has appointed you. You have a crown on your head because you made Jesus your choice. But the devil is forever trying to pull you out of God's will and God's purpose for your life. But let no man take your crown. Let no man. Let's go on to the next book. Psalms chapter 8, starting at verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visit, visited him? Yes. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now watch this. Look at, look at the word here. What is man? But he's pointing out that the original man, the first man, Adam, had a crown on his head. Thou hast crowned him with what? With glory and honor. See, God has positioned the man. And his position granted him glory and honor from God. Thou hast crowned him, praise God. There's a crown on your head, praise God. Because you have made Jesus your choice. There's a crown on your head. There's a place you have that God has given you. There's a station you have in God. Praise the name of God. And it can also be your gifts. Amen. Uh, what you call to do. Amen. Your ministry is a crown. Praise God. God has crowned you. He has put you in place. He has given you a task to do. Amen. To bring glory to his most holy name. The name of the Lord Jesus. There's a crown on, on your head. And everyone that bowed their knees to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a crown upon their heads. God has crowned them, praise God. Hallelujah. And the devil sees that crown. And he's sending people to try to take that crown, praise God. See, when we're walking in the will of God, we're going to make a whole lot of people unhappy with us because the devil is going to move upon people to take your crown. You may have a visitor come over to your house and you think it's a regular visit. The devil has sent that one to take your crown. <laughs> to move you out of position. You're faithful. You're, you're true to God. Praise God. You're doing everything God has called you to do that you know to do. Praise God. And heck on somebody outside the will of God not knowing that they're on the wrong assignment, sent to take away your crown, praise God, to make you even feel bad about doing what is the will of God in your life. Huh? Having the wrong fellowship. Fellowshipping with people outside of God's will is a possibility of one trying to take your crown. You got to be careful with this. You got to be careful what you surround yourself with. You only want to be surrounded by people who, who's a, have, who have like passion and, and, and a like spirit towards the will and, and, and purpose of God. There are some people that don't care about pleasing God. They don't care. They do whatever they're big enough to do. Amen. They don't care what, what you think about it. Amen. And you can't correct them because they can't be corrected because they don't have a desire to please God. That's, that's the wrong company, praise God. That's the wrong company. Don't let no man. God is telling his people, praise God, don't let no man. Don't let nobody take you out of place. I place you. I position you, praise God. I have placed my glory and honor upon you because you're doing exactly what I called you to do. And you're being exactly what I called you to be. But there be some, praise God that the devil is going to sin. Everybody want to be in your life, but everybody don't belong in your life. There's some folk that want in, but they don't belong in. They belong on the outside of your life. Because they're not going to move you towards purpose. They're not going to move you towards destiny. In other words, what God is destined for you, what God is purposed for you, they're not going to move you towards that. They're going to move you away from that. And their rebellion is very contagious. It's very contagious. Don't be around rebellious people because rebellion is contagious. 
Praise God. And like a faith person, a person walking in faith, which we have to have faith, you don't want to be around fearful folk because fear is contagious. And if you get caught up in fear, it's going to pull you out of faith. If you get caught up in rebellion, it's going to pull you out of your faithfulness. Praise God. Hallelujah. You don't want to be around a rebel. That's what a rebellious person is. He's a rebel. <laughs> She's a rebel against God. And rebels love company. Because like the devil, he didn't want to fall by himself. He wanted to take a third with him. <laughs> uh, you want to go against God, you're going to do that all by yourself. I'm not with you on that. Praise God. I'm not going to help you with that. I'm not going to assist you in that. Praise God. Hallelujah. You want to rebel, praise God, and you want to do things that's not pleasing to God, praise God, hallelujah, don't come my way. Stay away from me, praise God. But when, you, when you're when ready to align yourself with God, come see me, praise God. When, you, when you're ready to do what God has ordained and purpose for you to do, come, come by and see me, praise God. I can help you with that because that's where I'm at. That's where I live. That's my address. It is the will of God. It's where I live. Praise the name of God. So understand that God has put a crown on your head. Praise God. Which, which you have to control your association now. Because you're no better than your company. Do you know if you hold company with the rebellious, you become rebellious? That's your company. You can't be better than your company. Huh? If your company is out of the will of God, then, you know, be careful now that you don't find yourself outside the will of God. Because you, praise God, can't be no better than your company, praise God. Who do you socialize, socialize with? Who do you, praise God, embrace? What do you surround yourself with? You got a crown on your head. You got to protect that crown, praise God. You got to protect that crown, praise God. Because God has given you a crown of glory. And honor. Praise God. Because it's an honor to be in the will of God. It's so glorious to walk with him. Praise God. Amen. He has given you a crown. And it's all about your relationship with him. That is a crown on your head. Praise God. You have been positioned. Praise God. Don't get out of position. You have been positioned. Praise the name of God. Let's go on to the next Verse 6, thou maddest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, that thou hast put all things under his feet. Yes, so thou madest him to have what? Dominion. Keep, read that again, I'm sorry, read that verse again. Thou maddest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, thou hast put all things under his feet. Re read the verse pr uh, prior to that. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with That's glory and honor. Thou has crowned him. Thou has crowned him with what? Glory and honor. And honor. Thou has crowned him. Read that verse again. For thou has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. God has crowned him with glory. This is talking about the saint of God. This is God's, God's people we're talking about. Because everyone that gives their life to the Lord Jesus Christ receives a crown. They receive a crown. And once you bow your knees to the Lord Jesus Christ and surrender your all to him and allow him to be your Lord and your Savior, then will God crown you with glory and with honor. And read the next verse after that. After he crowns you with glory and honor, guess what happens? Thou maddest him to have dominion over the works. So, so you made him now. Once you crowned him, you made him to have dominion. Dominion. Once the crown comes, then dominion comes. Praise God. Once the crown comes, once God crowns you, because you have bowed your knees to the Lord Jesus Christ, he begins to crown you with glory and with honor and have made you to have dominion. Praise God. 
Read that verse again. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thou hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. How many things? All things. Because you got a crown on your head. God has made all things to be placed under your feet. Hallelujah. That's, see, look, look what power you have attained. You have power over God. God has placed all things under your feet. He has given you dominion. Praise God. Praise God. So even your enemies don't, doesn't know this yet, but you have dominion over your enemies. The, the, the news flash haven't come to them yet. But everybody that chooses to be an enemy is now your footstool. I'm about to rest my foot on your head. Because <laughs> you haven't rose against me, you rose against God. Hallelujah. Because now, praise God, I'm one with him. And to come against me is to come against him. And that's why when Paul the apostle, before he was an apostle, when he was just Saul of Tarsus, when he came up against the church, he was about to be made a footstool unawares. And Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? You thought you persecuted the servant, but just persecuting the one who the servant lives for, persecuting Jesus. Jesus said, why do you persecute thou me? It is hard to kick against the, 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 uh, the uh, pricks, but old English for the word stick of bars. It's hard to kick against the pricks. What, what language was God speaking to, to uh, Saul at that time? It was a language that he understood. It caused him to surrender his life. Because God was letting him know, when you come against my kids, you're about to draw blood, and it's going to be yours. I'm about to shed your blood, son. What happens when you kick your foot into a stick of our bush? Blood comes out. God was giving him a warning. I'm about to take you out your misery, in other words. You got only one option. If you don't serve me, it's up to you. You can serve me. Or you can be wiped out. Because the direction you're going, I'm going to bring it to an end. Because God wasn't going to allow this man to destroy the church of the living God. And when he caught on and he heard the Lord speak to him as such, he said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecuteth. So Jesus said, if you did it unto the least of my little ones, you've done it unto me. I'm Jesus. My God, my God. Because Paul asked the question, and this means a lot to a Jew. Paul being a Jew, he said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I thought I knew who God was. And he said, I got to find out now. And since, uh, since I got this vision from heaven, he said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus. My God, my God. So all this time, I'm coming up against the Almighty, and I don't even know it thinking I'm coming against the Christians. Not knowing that the Christians serve the true and the living God. Praise God that I once knew as Yahweh, but now he's known as Jesus. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Paul began to realize and he said, Lord, what you have me to do? Because he did it in error. He didn't know what he was doing. And he's told him to go uh, and let Ananias, Ananias is going to help you with that. And he'd send Paul to a, a street called Straight. You know, God has a way of giving a message out of, out of a message. But he sent Paul to a street called Straight because he's about to straighten Paul out. <laughs> and Paul down there praying, and he took a sight from him. So he meant business. Paul was blinded that hour. And so he didn't know who he's talking to. And when Paul's sight was taken away from him, God spoke to Ananias and said, there's a man named Saul that's down there praying. They have seen you in a vision and have seen that you come to lay hands on him. He will receive his sight. And Ananias reminded the Lord that, you know, this is the man. They got letters to kill the Christians. And the 
put to death anybody calling on your name. And God said, I know this. But he's a chosen vessel. In other words, he jumped camp. He's on the outside now. <laughs> he's no longer our enemy. But now he's a brother, praise God. Hallelujah. He's a servant of God. He's a child of God. I just crowned him. I put a crown on his head. Hallelujah. He's my son now. He's my chosen vessel. Hallelujah. I had to let Ananias know there's a crown on Paul's head now. Because Paul made a decision to follow Jesus. And because he made that decision, God sent Ananias to lay hands on him. And he met Paul and said, that, that, as the Lord met you along the way, he sent me to, to lay hands on you, that you might receive your sight. But two things happened that day. Not only did Paul receive his sight, but also Ananias laid hands on him to receive the Holy Ghost, to receive the Holy Spirit of God. And Paul was baptized with the Holy Spirit of God by the hands of Ananias. Praise God. You'll read this in Paul's testimony. Paul would tell his testimony to kings and to rulers. He would mention how his sight was given and how also he received the, the spirit of God. And then eyes came twofold to give him his sight naturally and then to give him his sight spiritually by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because once the Holy Spirit comes, your eyes have been opened spiritually. So God opened his natural eyes and opened his spiritual eyes because God has crowned him with glory and with honor. God bless you. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is unto you and unto your children and unto those that are far off, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. God bless you.